So it's recital season, and often that means stress for teachers, studio owners, students, and even parents. So in this series, we're taking a look at all things recital prep. And in this video in particular, we're going to be looking at more the admin side on how do we actually plan a recital without a lot of stress for anyone. I'm going to be sharing tips and tricks that I've learned over the years, both with in-person and online recitals. And uh, I'm going to show you the tips that are going to help you just streamline this whole process and make it a lot funner and a lot less stressful when you're planning your next studio recital. If we haven't met before, I'm Rosemary Penner from The Unfinished Lesson, and I want it all. I want balance in running my business, running my studio, and family life with twins. I want to have energy and time to be able to put creativity in my teaching. So The Unfinished Lesson started as my way of helping other independent music teachers and studio owners be able to get balance in their life and creativity in their studio. Because you know what? You can have both. Be sure to watch to the end. I'm going to be sharing two resources that'll help you plan your next recital without stress. Your clients and students, they're going to be really impressed with how fun and easy it is for them, while also super impressed that you just seem really relaxed and chill about everything. So idea one or tip one is guide the experience. This is something that if you spend time in the before the recital doing, it's going to be so much easier in the lead up and also during and after the recital. So what do I mean by this? I want you to set some really clear expectations from the start. This makes everyone's life so much easier and it makes for much better teacher and client relationships. So how do we kind of guide the experience? Well, with students, we let them know this is what to expect. Um, you know, this is the general format of the recital. If they're really nervous, you can let them know where in the program they are so that they can kind of lead into that. You can do practice stuff within lessons, which by the way, we'll be covering that in the upcoming part of this series. And you can just make it a lot easier for them, guiding those expectations all along the way. In terms of your clients, you can let them know, you know, here's the invitation. This is when you need an RSVP by. But it's also things like, do you want them to record video of their child playing? And do they need to send it to you? Well, how do they do that? When do they need to have that by? There's all sorts of things that we sometimes forget to let our clients know until it's kind of last minute. And so guiding that experience that they know, okay, you know what, I'm going to have to record a video, but I've got a few weeks to do it. That makes it a lot easier. And in terms of guests, I would actually recommend having a series of emails that go out before the recital. So for myself, I have the RSVP date, and then I also have a series of emails that go out. I'm really excited you're coming. Here's the link and the information you need. I have one the day before, an hour before, and then I even have an email that goes out afterwards. And the reason I have those is at this point, I do online recitals and I know that time zones and things like that can mean that sometimes people miss an event or a meeting, or in this case, a recital. And so, I've created a series of emails that I use in my studio that make it a lot easier. What I would recommend for you is as you're guiding the experience, think about what do you want each group of people, whether it's students, parents, teachers that work with you, um, or the guests, what do you want them doing? What do you want them to know is coming up? And then create a template. I love templates because when I create something and I know I'm going to be using it again, like those recital email templates, I just save it so that the next time all I'm doing is changing details. I look super creative when I do that, but I don't have to be. I can just kind of set those up, make sure the info is correct, and it's way less stress for me. 
It also means that you have less questions, less pushback, less frantic emails and calls going, oh my goodness, I just realized that I was supposed to have this to you. I completely forgot, what do I do now? Um, by guiding the expectations of what's coming up, whether it's the lead into the recital or the day of, it just makes it a lot less stressful for everyone else. And if it's less stressful for everyone else, it's less stressful for you as well. So idea or tip number two is to always have backup plans. In technology, we definitely, especially online teachers, we've learned we need to have backup plans. Internet can go, programs can crash, all those things. But I can tell you that even if you're doing an in-person recital, having a backup plan is a must. Something always goes wrong. So in terms of in-person recitals, some of the things that have gone wrong are um, one of the parents let me know, I know we're starting in like five minutes and my kid is supposed to play second, but he just told me that he forgot his book at home and he can't remember his song because he's nervous. Can we please do something? I need to go get it, but I, I won't be back in time for him to play at the beginning. So not a problem. That was something I just did on the fly, but I'd already thought if somebody was missing their book, what I would do. Um, another example is one year I, I thought I was being so smart. I had my students record their introduction within lesson time. Some of my students get really nervous and this way we could do a few takes and it would be totally fine, right? Made a beautiful PowerPoint presentation brought my device with me. I brought even a flash drive. Like I had multiple copies of this. And I got to the church. I put in the flash drive and the church's program turned all of the video sideways. So if you can imagine just like this. Um, so, you know, fine, that's okay. Grabbed my iPad Pro, you know, plugged it directly into the or attempted to plug it directly into the um, projector. Yeah, the projector was so old that my connector didn't work for it. So then my husband had to actually go home and I think he might've even had to go buy the connector that I needed for this particular projector. So you can see, like I had a plan, I had my backup plan, the backup plan didn't work. And eventually like three down is when it, somewhat worked for whatever reason it just would not play these videos out of the sideways version and you know what it is what it is so i had to get the um the tech person who was supposed to you know just make sure the microphone was working i'm like okay here's the recital program here's the backing tracks in order you're going to press play when the student nods because, oh yeah, that was the other element I decided to add that year. It all worked out, but you know what? Having those backup plans made it a lot easier. I wasn't scrambling to try and figure out what the next solution was because I'd already thought, okay, well, if this goes wrong, what am I going to do next? And it's just a lot easier. What I would also recommend is once the recital is done, if you have used your backup plans, one, make sure they're written down somewhere, kind of like those templates, and then make a note what worked well and what didn't so that the next time you're not starting from scratch. Um, sometimes having less stress when we're planning, it might not be the first year, it might be the second year or the third year, um, but hopefully we can get you less stress this first year that you're doing it. Idea three, make it fun and build community. So the goal in my studio with a recital is that it's supposed to be fun and that it's a celebration that we all come together and we get to listen to not only what the students have learned from other composers, but what they've created on their own. So in terms of that, a big part of that is coming together as a community. This is something I really stress in the weeks and even months leading up to the recital is that our studio recital is always about building community. So 
what do we do here? Well, this can be very overwhelming. I, I'll admit, the idea of building community and we're supposed to make it fun and we look up online, you know, ways to make my recital fun or whatever it might be. And there's like a million ideas. So I'm gonna give you three questions to ask yourself that will hopefully help you kind of take a million ideas and get it down to the few that are going to work the best for you. One, does it make the recital more fun and engaging? Chances are it will. So that will probably be an easy yes. Does it help build community? So we, there's lots of fun ideas, but if it doesn't help build community, and that's really important to you, that your studio recital is about the community coming together, then some ideas, as fantastic as they are, just aren't gonna be a right fit, right? So this is where you might start having some no's. The third one, and here's a really important one. So remember, I wanna have it all. So my question always is, can I prepare this idea or this project to my standards without a lot of extra stress um, or giving up other priorities? That's the key where the balance comes in because a lot of times when we're stressed out, it's because we're out of alignment with what is important to us. So if your recital is supposed to be something fun and engaging and a community building event, and it's really important to you to be able to run your studio without running yourself into the ground, or to be able to teach without burning out, then those three questions will help you take those million ideas, which are probably, most of them are absolutely amazing, and get them down to the ones that work for you. If you can't answer yes to all of those, then maybe write it down as this is an idea for another recital, right? Or maybe you're gonna look up a resource that will help you be able to do this where you're not creating everything. So each of us is going to take a different approach to our recitals. Whether you have an in-person recital or an online recital, um, or you do a mix of both, then the activities are gonna change. The things that are important to you or the approach that you wanna take are going to change over time. My recitals used to be much more formal. They're certainly, while we dress up, they're not nearly as formal as they used to be. And once I moved my studio online, I realized that community part of it was really important to me. Um, and that if I wanted my studio to thrive, I needed to make sure that we had a community that there was a reason for them to keep coming back year after year, other than just my amazing teaching, of course. <laughs> so use these tips to streamline your recital planning so that you kind of go from the world is my oyster and I'm totally overwhelmed to I know my vision and I've got this because we definitely want you on that second one. So as promised, here are two resource ideas. Um, ideas and, and just actually resources that you can use in the weeks up to your recital. They're gonna help you take the tips from this video and kind of help you step by step being able to apply what we've talked about here. So the first one is, and I, you know what, it's a schnazzy title, I know, how to plan a piano recital without stress, step by step. Um, so this is an article that I wrote on my site. It is geared towards online recitals. However, I've also included sections for each of the categories, both before, during, and after your recital, so that if you're doing in-person, this is exactly how you're going to apply the ideas I've already given to your in-person recital. There's a lot of overlap between them, and uh, I just wanted to make sure that you could get the ideas regardless of which format you're choosing. The second resource is Five Ways Recital Activities. So this is something that we use in my studio. It's stuff that's off the bench, it's active, it's fun, we end up laughing, and all of it has to do with either the performance or making sure that songs are solid. 
um, so the Mastery of Pieces. These are fun, and by the way, they're fantastic for social media. If you make sure you take pictures and video while your students are doing these, you can post them on your social media accounts for your studio, and parents and students love them. Uh, make sure you tag me so that I can see them too, okay? Because I would love to see them in action. The links for those are going to be in the description. So you're not going to want to miss out on the recital prep series that we've got going on this month. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so that you don't want to miss out or so that you don't miss out. Um, and also in the description below, make sure that you watch the first video in this series, which it has more to do with types of recitals and but also marketing it to your students and your clients. Especially if you're doing something new, you'll want to watch that one.